All right, guys, we've got a, a real simple little project here to uh, get done. These are some parts off of a die filer. I actually don't know the make of the die filer, but I can tell you that's what, it, that's what it's off of. You've got the flywheel here, then you have the crankshaft. And all he needs done is to uh, mill a new Woodruff key in the shaft. So if you look on the back side right here, you can see what's left uh, of what was most likely the original Woodruff key, and it somehow, over the time, it has sheared off, and just the set screw was uh, kind of pressed down in there to kind of hold it in place. So that's all he needs. This uh, this project belongs to uh, a young fellow here in town that contacted me via email and uh, asked me if, if this was something that I could help him do because he couldn't find anybody around that was uh, that was willing to take on this uh, little project. And that's how most of the machine shops are. People stay busy with their production runs and and uh, don't want to mess with little stuff like this, but you know, obviously we can take care of this, no problem for him. And I thought it was really interesting uh, that he that he's working on this because as I said, he looks kind of young, maybe 18 or so, I don't know, 18 to 20. And he says that uh, he just likes tinkering with this kind of stuff. So got to give it to him for uh, wanting to get his hands on mechanical things and uh, work on this kind of stuff. So I actually encourage them to check into uh, our local college PSC because they do have a manufacturing program there that he could look into if this is the kind of stuff that he was really interested in and maybe maybe he could uh, find some kind of career in manufacturing. So anyway, I told him I'd give him a hand. So all we're gonna do is we're gonna set this shaft up in the, in the mill and we're gonna mill a new Woodruff key for him. This is a 3 16th wide key that's been broached in the, in the flywheel right here. They've got a set screw hole drilled and tapped at an angle to lock it in place. So apparently it just comes down and sits right on top of that Woodruff key. I do have a, um, I have a, this is a number 608 Woodruff key, which is a 3 16th wide by um, one inch in, in diameter there, if you was to uh, measure the diameter of that. And I do have a brand new cutter that hadn't been used for. This is one of dad's. Number 608 Woodruff Cutter. So we'll set the, all this up in the middle of the machine and we'll come in here just like so and just uh, cut a new Woodruff key for him. So we'll go to the mill, get the shaft set up and uh, get it done. All right, so over here on our mill of machine, one of the things that makes this job a little bit tricky is the fact that when you come in here and you clamp it in the machine vise like this, you don't have enough room to get in here and actually cut the keyway because your vise jaw is, is in the way. So what I want to do is space this out so that we can come in here. We'll just set that down for now so that we can come in here with our cutter and have clearance away from this jaw to be able to come in there and cut that. So I'm going to use, we're going to start off with these. I'm using the fireball tool magnetic blocks. Now I've already mic'd these with a micrometer and both of them are within a, a half a thousandths being uh, the same thickness. So good enough for what we're doing here, milling a Woodruff key. So we're going to set these down in here. And this is also going to allow, allow me to have a little bit of clearance in the middle for a V-block that we're going to use on our moving jaw. So that's going to come up and it's not going to hit the, uh, the parallel right there. All right, so we'll go ahead and set this in there like so. Now we're going to mill the key. There's the old one. We're going to rotate it. We're going to mill it 180 degrees across on the other side. So it looks like they pretty well got it. The counterweight of the crankshaft is at the bottom if you're looking over here. So we're looking at it and that should be good right about there. I can see the key right here on the back side. It looks like it's directly 180 out. Now we'll take this uh, V-block right here and this can sit right in there like that and hold it and give us our clearance over here to uh, mill our keyway. So in addition, I'm gonna use this half inch stick magnetic block on the back side of the V right here. And I'll adjust that so that it's kind of down some. So we'll go ahead and set this in there in the middle, run our jaw up very lightly. Just make sure it gets squared up just like that there. All right, and then I'm gonna take this and just, just so that it looks a little more even, I'm gonna tap this magnetic block even with the top of the uh, V block right there. All 
All right, and that should have us right there. We'll just torque the vise. And you can see now we can come in here with our Woodruff cutter and have plenty of clearance between the workpiece and the uh, vise there to be able to cut that keyway. So the flywheel that goes on the end is an uh, inch and a quarter thick and it sits flush with the end of the shaft there. So we wanna make sure that we put our key directly in the middle of that. So that's gonna end up being uh, five eighths from the end of the shaft to the center of it. So we'll use a half inch edge finder for that. And once we find the edge, we'll just move it down seven eighths. That should be the center location of where we're gonna mill our keyway. We've got our Woodruff cutter mounted in the collet nice and tight. So to touch off on this, I'm gonna simply touch off using the quill. So the, the bottom and the, the sides of these cutters are ground flat, okay? There's no clearance on either side of it. Your only clearance is behind the cutting edge there. So we can come down with the quill and just gently touch the top of the shaft, which is what I'm doing. I'm just gonna come down until it touches, just like that. I'm gonna go ahead and lock the spindle in place and we're gonna use our Y axis to move off out of the way. So that cutter should be right on the edge of that shaft and it measures exactly one inch. So our Z movement up is gonna be half the thickness of this, which is 0.5, and then half the thickness of the cutter, which is gonna be 330 seconds. So our total movement is gonna be uh, 0.5937, I believe, 5937. So we'll go ahead and uh, zero out the uh, knee and crank it on up. We've got our Z zeroed out here, and we made sure our cutter is clear and it's not gonna hit the jaw or the shaft there. Zero, so one, two, three, four, five, and then around to 93. Just gonna go about 93 and a half, and that should be good enough right there. We should be ready to mill this key. First thing I need to do is get the the cutter touched off on a flat. So I wanna come in and cut the radius of the shaft until the full width of the cutter is actually cutting. At that point, our depth is gonna be 0.339. And you can pull this stuff up in the uh, machinery's handbook under the Woodruff key seat section. And it gives you all of the information you need to know for whatever size key seat cutter that you're using there. Generally run these cutters kinda of slow also helps with uh, chatter and vibration too. All right, so that spot right there is where our zero is gonna be. I'm just coming back in until it touches and we'll stop it there. I'm gonna reset my digital readout on Y to zero and we're ready to make this cut. I'll pull you in for a tighter shot for this cut here. We can get in here and uh, scale our, our measurement, you know, make sure the right depth. And what I've got here, I've got two Woodruff keys, same size, but this one right here I've taken and I have filed on a mill smooth file so that you can easily stick it into the keyway like that. And then you can get in there with your scale and actually measure the stick out above the shaft there, okay? This I only use for measuring. This is not gonna get sent with it. So a Woodruff key should fit snugly should be nice and tight. And you can see this is one that I'll send with it and it's, it's tight. So you'll have to take that. I would dress it slightly, but you want it to where it bumps in there and it stays nice and tight. So this is the one that I will send with the shaft right there. But just for measuring purposes, we've got the one that's filed right here. Now I didn't go the exact full depth, which was 0.339. I ended up going 0.330 on the DRO just to leave it because sometimes it goes a few thousandths deeper than you want it. But the internal keyway of the flywheel is an eighth inch. So as long as you're just under eighth inch on this stick out here, you're gonna clear. So if we put a scale up there, you can see 
the one eighth line, it's it's just shy of the one eighth. And uh, flip over there, it's 30 seconds. So um, the actual depth would be uh, 330 seconds. But you see, we've got it, we've got it just a shade over, just using a scale measurement there. So this key, once you put the new one in there, that should clear nicely and and uh, have the right amount of stick out for our application. So we're ready to get this out of the out of the vise. Job is done. Only thing we got left to do is a little bit of deburring on it. Get the cutter out first and get it put away. Well, that's it for this job. It's all finished up there. Just wanted to did, I wanted to show you this. So we've got our um, flywheel here. So this is the new key that I have not dressed. I'm gonna send with the, uh, with the shaft there. And just wanna show you, it fits that keyway nicely. We've got a nice fit in there. And as I said, our depth there is one eight. So we got uh, adequate clearance over the top of this key once it's pressed in there. And uh, one of the things I wanted to show you, so this is the key that I took and filed it uh, a little bit more narrow so that we could easily use it to go in and out to check with on our depth. So I just used a blue Sharpie just so that I, I know that that's the one that I filed. And I'm gonna put it back away. This is a Woodruff Kesey kit that I had uh, picked up from McMaster Car. So it's got pretty much all of your standard sizes in, uh, in this size range anyway. These get much larger, but this is a nice kit to have around the shop here. So we are using the number 608, which is 3 16 by one. So I'm gonna take this guy and put it in this one right here. And we've got a good reference key that we can use next time we have to uh, mill that particular size right there. All right, so this is finished up. I hope you guys enjoyed watching this little project and we got plenty more to do. So I hope to see you again.
Hey guys, I've got this small job that I want to share with you. And I say small because we've got some small parts here that we got to work with and small diameters that we have to work with. So what we have are two hydraulic rod glands right here. Okay. And I'm, what I was told is that these are used to open and close a, an engine hatch on a boat. And so there's one on each side of the hatch there. This is the actual rod and the piston right there. We don't have to do anything with this, but this is how they work. So you've got the gland that slides down. So your seal is inside there. There's a tube that just screws into, and then you're gonna have a port on both sides that makes the rod, you know, uh, extend or retract. What they wanna do is to modify the groove inside the gland here to use a regular, like hydraulic type seal. So this is a double lip rod seal instead of the o-ring so we need to get inside this bore and machine that groove to a wider and larger diameter than what's in there because right now it's size for a uh, zero series o-ring which is this guy right there all right so first thing i had to do was get in here and measure this so this is a perfect job to uh, make use of the steric groove mic so i've got my steric number 260 groove mic right here and you can use this to get in there and measure things like the land, which is the distance between the face and where that where the groove starts on the inside. So I get in there like that and I measure the land and then I actually measure the groove width there. So I got that done. I got a couple of pictures there that I took to share with you that. It's just hard to show the detail of actually using this mic and getting some video of it. These are these are a little tricky to use. They, you just have to get the right feel and you have to get everything squared up to get an accurate reading on that. So usually it takes a few tries to get it squared up inside there to get it to work. <clears throat> but I took some measurements. The measurements in the photos are probably a little bit different than what I actually measured because I did it three times and make sure I got myself right there. So I wrote my dimensions down. The, the land right now is 370 thousandths from the face to where the groove starts. And I, and I, I want to write that down so that I know how far in to take the tool whenever we touch off. All right, so it's going to be 370 thousandths, and then our, our groove width right now is 90 thousandths wide, groove diameter of 5 eighths. I measured it being 626. Now I use these little uh, spring calipers right here to get inside and measure this uh, groove width, or groove diameter, I mean. And then you just take that, take that out, and I use some uh, calipers on top of that and measure it out and that tells you your your groove diameter okay so that's our seals and they brought let me just move these out of the way here so he actually brought the paper this is just a printout of the uh off hercules hydraulics and this gives your specifications to the groove width and diameter it needs to be so nominal rod size is a half inch so the inside of this is half inch OD of it's three quarter. And the uh, height, which is the thickness of it, height in seals is uh, one eighth. So it gives us the specs of what the groove needs to be. So it needs to be 138 thousandths wide with a diameter of 750 thousandths. Now you do have a tolerance and it, and it lists that in this book here of what your tolerance is. I believe it's uh, our groove width is plus 10 thousandths minus zero and in our housing diameter, which will be our groove diameter, 750 plus two minus zero. So this gives you our specs. I can pull up my hydraulic book and this is the same exact information that's in there. So that's the job at hand. Now, it's a little tricky getting in there uh, using a small bore and bar and a tool bit, but what I wanted to do was go ahead and get me a Micro 100 carbide bar to do this job. So that's what I got here. We've got a new, Micro quick carbide bar that is gonna make this job quick and easy. It has just enough room to be able to go inside this bore and cut that groove the way we want, okay? I don't have to fuss around with trying to hand grind a little tiny tool bit to get in there and do this. This goes inside this tool holder right here, this micro quick, it's gonna go inside there. It's a precision fit so I got to make sure I get it straight in there and it just locks in with a uh, with a set screw so that's going to make that tool nice and now that I have this it'll be in the toolbox to go along with my other micro quick bars for jobs like this so 
Enough talking, let's go over to the lathe and see if we can get this little job done. The way these Micro 100, uh, the Micro Quick style of bars work, they have an angle ground on the back of the bar that helps center the tool exactly straight. So there's a pin machined in the holder right here. So when you stick the bar in there, and you see this, this little ground section here, that's the flat for the set screw that locks it in place. So it's real easy. You just, you push it back and that pin squares it up on that angle there. And then whenever you tighten the set screw here, it locks it into place and pushes it back against that pin. They make these in a lot of different sizes for uh, boring, grooving, threading. They have uh, Acme thread and a lot of different lengths and even different shank diameters there. So this is a half inch shank. I've got it in three eighths as well for even smaller stuff, but uh, they offer these in a few different size shanks. So it's a really nice system to have for the, for the lathe. I'm gonna get the tool touched off on both the bore and the face so that I can use my digital readout for our uh, movements that we want. So this bar will just clear this bore. That's going to be our X. What I'm going to do is just go ahead and zero. Actually, I'm going to put a value in there at um, 0.5. So that's our working diameter right there since we touched off on the bore. And it's off center just a little bit because we're, we're in a uh, three jaw chuck, but I'm going to measure it and make sure that we uh, cut it to the proper diameter, but that'll get us started right there. Now we can go ahead and do the, uh, do the face here as well. All right, that's our touch off on our face. I'm going to zero Y. Coming here to our 0.5. I go in about five thousandths. All right, and then I've got my. We need to go in 496 thousandths. That should be our location. See, you can't even can't even see it so it's that's why I'm saying it's hard to share with this kind of stuff but we'll get her done so I'm using the digital readout and I'm on a half inch I want to take our uh, the tip of our tool out to 0.750 on the DRO and the bottom of our groove there Take it out to 750. I'm, I'm watching the DRO by the way. We're at 700. Seven forty-nine. Alright, there we go. Now I'm gonna go back to uh, half inch on X. So I need to step it over. We got to do a Z movement with our tool to widen out the groove, and that is going to be, we've got it written down here, 12 thousandths. So we're going to move the tool in 12 thousandths on Z. All right, and we're bringing, bringing the tool back out to 0.750 on our diameter. All right, 750, I'm gonna bring it back to zero on Z. Retract the tool back to 0.5 on X. We gotta do that and make sure that we clear our tool coming out and go in about two thousandths. And there we have it.
that should be cut to size, but I'll get in there with our mics and uh, measure it and verify it. All right, let's get in there with our groove mic and see what kind of measurement we can get with that. I'm going to turn the uh, readings of the barrel down so I, that I'm not looking at it because you don't want to read it. You don't want to try to make the mic read what it is that you're wanting. You, do, you want to base it off of the feel of the mic. So that's feeling right. I'm kind of putting pressure back and forth there. You also want it square in line with the axis there. So that feels pretty good. Let's see what we'll do is just transfer our reading to these uh, digital calipers. Let's see what I get. 140 thousandths. I was reading 140 before I pulled them off there. So I think the width of our groove is right on par of where we did it. And it should be right because I measured the uh, tool before I stuck it in there. The carbide tool is 0.126 wide. And the width that we wanted is 138 thousandths wide. So that's a difference of 12 thousandths. So once we made our first cut, I moved the tool in Z direction 12 thousandths and brought it back out to 750 which should make the 138 thousandths um, wide groove there. So on our diameter there, we're gonna use these spring calipers again. I'm just gonna stick them in there. You can get some good measurements of these, but these can be really tricky too because you gotta get the feel right. Try to get it top dead center and just slightly rock it to where you, you feel a little bit of friction. You feel it touching. And just leave it alone once you get it there. And then transfer the reading over to some calipers. So we're looking for 750. I'm just gonna rock it back and forth. And I feel it touching right there. I feel it touching. So. I'm going to call that our measurement, 751 on our diameter there. Okay, so we should be within tolerance, call, you know, call out in the book anyway. So really I need to get in there and see if I can break those sharp edges off there. I've got a, a threading tool that will go in this bar, so I might use that to get in there and just break the sharp edge off of it. Uh, but other than that, we got the first one done. I've got the threading bar in there. I'm going to use that just to break those sharp edges. And um, I'm using my DRO to tell me where I'm at on the tip of that tool. All right, I'm gonna bring it out 100 thousandths. Now this one I'm gonna do by sound. I can just see up in there. I'm gonna go back and touch the backside. I don't know if you can hear that. All right, I'm going to bring it forward and touch the front side. I'm just listening for it. I think you can hear that. All right, let's bring it back a hundred thousandths so we can retract it. There we go. So even though it's 30 degree, it's still a chamfered edge in there. Go ahead and take this tool out. Looks good in there. All right, one down, one to go. I just want to go ahead and verify these measurements on the second gland that we just cut. Hundred and forty three. Perfect. I actually went instead of twelve thousandths like the first one, I actually went fifteen thousandths on that one. I realized our uh, our plus tolerance was ten thousand, so 
So I'm getting 144 to 145 on our width right there. Target was 138 plus 10 minus zero. And we got our little, little Yankee spring calipers here. Go in until I know that it's not touching both sides and then try to bring it out, rocking it until I get that touch top dead center. I'm gonna go with that right there, see what we get. Touching right there on 748, so that's telling me that I know it's gonna be right where it needs to be. I brought it to the same diameter as the first, but as I said, these can be a little tricky to get it on the exact size. So we're a couple thousandths off with a spring caliper. I know that we're there based off our DRO readings there. All right, so I just need to chamfer that one and then uh, the, this would be finished up here. All right, guys, our two rod glands are finished up. That was uh, pretty simple, but with the right tools, it made it a lot easier than what it could have been uh, without a DRO or without the proper tools there. So the uh, Micro 100 carbide bar was really a time saver there on being able to get in there and cut that without having to make you know a, a tool bit there. So this will be a great uh, tool to keep in the box. And then good use of our groove mic and our little spring calipers to get that done. So I'm not gonna put the seals in there. I'm gonna let the customer, the guy that has this, I'm gonna let him put them in there. But otherwise, uh, that little job, that's done. This is one of them Heyman jobs that landed in my lap in one of those classic cases where somebody has tried to fix something and instead of letting somebody that actually knows how to work on hydraulic parts fix it, they tried to fix it themselves. I don't know what, what all they've done here, but this bolt right here has been fabric cobbled. Look at that. And you see that den in the end right there? Well, inside this hole, this bolt goes right up in here. Inside here, there is a ball check valve like a ball bearing that's stuck inside there because they have run this in there so tight that it pressed it down in there. So there's no way to get in there to actually kind of knock the ball out. So what I've done is I made up this uh, simple little adapter right here out of some scrap metal that's gonna screw right into this fitting right here, this, this tap hole. That'll screw in there and bottom out. Then it'll block the other two holes that's drilled in there from this hole uh, here and going down into the tank. 
we got this quick coupling that's going to screw into that right there and we're going to use a hydraulic power unit and a hook to this and use hydraulic power to hopefully come through here and just blow that ball out of that hole we'll put a bolt a good bolt down inside this hole here to, to capture it and hopefully it won't take much pressure at all to just uh, blow that ball right out of that stuck hole there so that's the idea we'll give it a shot and uh, see if that works hey buddy got it back together Perfect.